I sing the night into the morning. I sing my fear into your praise. I sing my soul into your presence. Whenever I say your name, let the devil know not today. Let the devil know not today. Let the devil know not today, not today, not today. Love stood down dead, crush the devil's head. Fear is just a lie running out of breath. Back beneath your feet, I'm standing on Jesus' head. Let the devil know not today. Let the devil know not today. No, no, not ever again. Let the devil know not today, not today, not today. I sing the night into the morning. I sing my fear into your praise. I sing my soul into your presence. Whenever I say your name, let the devil know not today. Let the devil know not today. No, 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 not every day. Let the devil know not today. Not today. Not today. Okay, before we go into the next part. No right to steal your joy, to steal your praise this morning. We you come in, so wipe it clean, and let's just give it to God. Because believe me, I'm fighting for my praise this morning. I know there's probably others. So let's just, let's tell them who wins. place amen hallelujah come on let's give the king of kings and the lord of lords the highest praise you've given him today come on he's been better to you than you being to him right now give him the best praise you've got the bible says clap your hands all your people and shout unto god with a voice of triumph hallelujah you got a reason to worship jesus this amen. morning the bible says he came to set the captive free he didn't come for the, those that didn't have need of a physician, but he came for those that were sick. Hallelujah. I was sick. You were sick. And Jesus Christ took my burdens to the cross. Amen. He stretched out his arms wide. He looked up unto heaven and he said, it is finished. The debt has been paid. Amen. Can one more time, can we give King Jesus a big hand clap of praise this morning? Amen. It's come that time in the service. We want to continue to worship God with our giving. Amen. I am so thankful for what God's got in store for us this morning. Northwoods has been able to just see God moving in a, in a level we ha we've yet to see. Three years, uh, March 19th is three years since my wife and I have came to Northwoods. And I'm telling you, 
God has done some amazing things. But let me tell you, he didn't do it because I came here. He didn't do it because my wife came here. He did it because there were some faithful believers that came together. Those of you under the sound of my voice right now, maybe, maybe you, you don't think God can use you, but let me tell you, every soul that's been saved through this ministry, every time God has, has touched someone or baptized someone in his spirit, it comes because faithful believers have come together. You didn't quit. You didn't give up. You held on to the plow and you kept pushing and you kept pressing, not looking back to yesterday, but looking ahead, knowing that greater things are still to come. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness of serving the Lord. Amen. Thank you for what you've done at Northwoods. And right now, Northwoods, will you give every visitor we have today a big hand? Will you give our online family a big hand? Amen. God is blessing us on the, in the online family all over the nation. Amen. People are watching and, and, and getting with us and sending their comments and asking for prayer. God's doing some great and mighty things. It's so good to see each and every one of you. And as we prepare to give to God this morning, let me tell you, you can't buy God. It ain't about how much money you can put in a plate, but it's about how, about how much faith you can put it in there with. Because I promise you, I serve the same God who took two fish and five loaves and multiplied it. Amen. I, I serve the same God that can come in a little small town like Thomasville, Georgia, and explode a worldwide revival. Amen. If you believe it, will you just lift your hands up? Let's go to the Lord in prayers. We prepare to give this morning. I want you to give out of the abundance of your overflow. Father God, we thank you right now for the opportunity that we have to gather in your presence. I pray, God, that you will bless every man, woman, boy, and girl under the sound of my voice. I pray, Lord, that you would bless this seed as it is about to be sown, God, that you would allow it to fall into good ground, that you would let it do what it was sent to do, God. And when we release the seed from our hand, we place it into your will, God. And we just ask you in the mighty, most precious name of Jesus, we give you all the praise, all of the honor, and all the glory for what you've done, what you are doing, and what you are about to do. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And everybody says, amen. If you've got a gift this morning, bring it down. Take about two minutes. Go around shake somebody's hand, hug somebody's neck, greet a neighbor, greet somebody that you hadn't hey, greeted this morning over. and let them know God loves you. Hey everybody, welcome to Northwoods Church. We're so excited to have you, so blessed to have you. We just want you guys to know our vision here is to worship, grow, and serve together. And we hope this morning is just an impactful and amazing morning for you guys. The pastor's going to have a powerful word. The praise team's going to be on point. We already know all this. But just worship with us and be together with us. Amen. Hey, this is Brother Tim. I'm inviting all the men to our next men's fellowship on March the 21st. We'll be meeting at Brian Moore's house at 6 p.m. We'll be doing a cookout and uh, fellowship. Uh, we'll have more information on the Men of Valor webpage and the new. Hey, what we're going to do is we're going to play that video after everybody gets seated back down because I know everybody's kind of walking around and stuff. We're going to play that announcement video in a second, all right? We'll, we'll, we'll get back to it. How many of y'all know that our praise is our weapon to fight the enemy? I know it's hard for some of us this morning to lift the praises up. We're tired, we're hurting. We might be in pain, loss of someone in our life. But the only way to break through those things is to praise through it, press through it. And I'm just going to ask you this morning just to... You know, it's not about being the best singer. Trust me, they asked me to lead a song, and I cannot sing. But I love praising the Lord, man. 
I love giving him all the praises for what he's done in my life and in my wife's life. And he's just awesome. I love him. So I got to give it back to him. And this is how we do it. this morning.
Father God, I know that things have gone away some this morning. God, I know that at times it gets uncomfortable. God, I know at times it gets kind of weird in this place, God. God, I even know that this morning that the, the enemy's fighting us left and right because he knows there's something great that's about to take place in this place. But see, God, I know you. I know how you work. I know how you like to step into the last second and save the day. I know how you always are there. No matter what's going on, no matter what I'm going through, you're always there. And God, this morning, I don't know about anybody else, but God, this morning, I'm excited. Because this morning I get to come in here, I get to praise God. Amen. I get to worship God. I get to do it freely. Amen. Come on. And see, this morning I'm not trying to amp nobody up, so don't believe that. I'm sitting here just trying to get you guys to see something. See, the enemy's fighting because your blessing's right here. And the enemy don't want you getting to it. Because if you get to it, then guess what happens? Then the enemy loses. And see, the enemy don't want to lose this morning. The enemy's mad. He's, he's, he's ticked off because we've been messing with his territory, quote unquote. And see, God's already said everywhere you look is yours. Ooh, see, I don't believe anybody's believing this. See, God's already said it. This is yours. Claim it. Take victory where you stand. Take victory where you stand. And see, this morning, I'm crazy enough to believe just for one moment, just for one minute, that in this place we can sing a song we can sing a bridge and we can tick the enemy off real quick because when God's people become united when God's people come together there's no division there's no oh he said this she's no when we come to, to united the enemy's scared when we unite because we're a force to be reckoned with see this is an army right here Oh, see, some of y'all don't believe it yet. This is an army right here. Slap your, your neighbor and tell them this is an army right here. Go ahead, pop your neighbor real quick. Tell them this is an army right here. Y'all sing this part with us. It goes, this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. Again. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise Just one more time. Just one more time. We say. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God. The God of breakthroughs on our side. He's on our side. Lift him high, high. lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. God, I just thank you, Lord, for everything that you've already done to this point. I thank you, Lord, because I already know, God. God, that no matter what we do, God, no matter how many times we, we go astray, no matter how many times that things come against us, Lord, that, God, you won't relent. 
God, you won't back down. You won't give up. You keep chasing after me no matter what, God. I, I, I know, God, that you're here for us. And God, this morning, I just, I truly feel like there's people here now that God, that are, that are, that are craving something. God, that are hungry for something that are starving for a move of God that hasn't happened to them in their lives lately. That God, they're waiting on something to affect them, God, to change them, God, to grow them, God, to move them, God. But God, today we lay it all down. God, we, get, we lay everything down. We lay all the junk yes, that's come against hallelujah. us, God. We lay all the addictions down. We lay everything that we have made God in this place down. Because no longer is my cell phone gonna be my idol. God, no longer is my TV going to be an idol. No longer is these songs and all this other stuff who come the idol. God, you are God and God alone. And I ask you right now, God, that you would move in this place, God. God, don't let up. Don't let go. Don't give up, God. Keep moving with us, God. Help us, God, as we continue to chase after you, God. But God, don't let go. God, we praise you, Lord God. Just move in this place, Lord. Say you won't relent, Lord. You won't relent until you have it all. My heart is yours. Say you won't, Lord. You won't relent until you you have it all. Known as Christ, he's called by many names, but I 
We just praise you in this place, Lord. We just praise you, Lord. I don't want to talk. situations to be worked out God I pray God for healings God for strength for growth Lord but Lord most of all I pray for salvation I pray for direction I pray for guidance Lord <laughs> moving through us God moving this place Lord. Say it one more time, you won't. You won't relent until you have it all. My heart is yours. You won't relent, Lord. You won't relent until you you have it. God, we know that your word says in John 10, 10, that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Lord, I'm so thankful the scripture doesn't stop there. But you said, I have come that you might have life and life abundantly. So this morning, God, we're not just praying for life. We're praying for abundance, God. Yes, Lord, Lord God. we're praying for an abundance of yes, an anointing, God. God. We yes, don't want just enough to break the yoke. We want enough to destroy the yoke, God. Lord, we don't want just a taste of it, God. We want the all-consuming fire of the Holy Ghost in this house, God. Lord, your word says that men, some will trust in horses, some will trust in chariots, but I will remain in the name of the Lord. God, I thank you that your Lord, that your name is a shield for me and the lifter up of my head, oh God. Lord, I went to sleep and you raised me up again. Oh God, they have set themselves about me, ten thousands, but I will not be afraid, for God, you have smote them upon their cheekbone and you have broken the enemy's teeth, God. I thank you, Lord that you are still the lion of the tribe of Judah. You are still Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God our provider. You are still the miracle maker. You are still the salvation that we hope for. God, you are still the overcomer. You are still King of kings and Lord of lords. You are still Rose of Sharon. You are Lily of the valley. You are the bright and the morning star. You have come that I might have life abundant in whom the sun sets free. It's free indeed. When the enemy comes in like a flood, then the Spirit of the Lord shall lift 
up a standard against him. Oh God, you come to give power to the church and the church will arise and begin to slay the giants that have spoken against your people for so long, God. Oh God, let somebody hear this morning that they were born on purpose, for purpose, God. That they've been given the gift of authority. They've been given the gift of boldness. They've been given the gifts of your mighty and Holy Spirit. So this morning, God, as we get ready to embark on your word, God, as we get ready, as we open ourselves up this morning to have your word deposited into our spirits, God, I want to thank you. I want to thank you that this morning there ain't a soul that has to leave this house bankrupt of joy. God, there ain't a soul that has to leave this house this morning bankrupt of happiness, bankrupt of peace, bankrupt of, of healing, bankrupt of hope, bankrupt, oh God, of all the things the enemy would want us to be. But God, I declare and I decree this morning in this house of God that there shall be freedom. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God, we trust you this morning we thank you we thank you God for the man of the hour God I know that your anointing is upon him and you have anointed him to preach to bring good tidings to declare the truth to heal the sick to cleanse the leper God right now I pray Father that everything that you have placed into his belly would come to his remembrance as he's beginning to declare your word. Let it come sharp, powerful, quick. And I pray, God, that you would send ministering angels. I pray for three things to take place in this service this morning. God, I pray that your conviction would enter this house. And with your conviction, God, I pray that there will come change. God, as we begin to be transformed and renewed by you, God, I pray for challenge. That you challenge each and every believer in this house. That when we walk out of these doors today, that we will go knowing who we are in the Lord. That we will go knowing that you have called us and set us apart. That we will go knowing that there is no weapon formed against us that will prosper. And every tongue that would arise in judgment is condemned. In the name of Jesus. Have your divine and most holy way, God. We turn this service to you. And we give you all of the praise and all of the honor and all of the glory. And the church says, amen. Will you turn to about two or three people and say, I don't know what God's about to do. Go on, say it. I don't know what God's about to do. But I know whatever it is, it's going to be better than I can imagine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give somebody a high five. You may be seated all over the house this morning. Sister Victoria, do y'all have the video ready? As I prepare to turn the service over to the man of the hour, we had a video we was going to play for you at the beginning of the service and as you can tell there's some things done got in our junk this morning and trying to trip some stuff up but it ain't going to stop where we're going but these I wanted to share this with you before I, I introduce our speaker for the hour because there's some announcements this is this is something that I believe brings the body of Christ together and, and without communication without knowing um, people get left in the dark so uh, we want to share this with you there's some good stuff about to come up in Northwoods and uh, and then I'll be back up after the video hey everybody welcome to Northwoods Church we're so excited to have you so blessed to have you we just want you guys to know our vision here is to worship, grow, and serve together. And we hope this morning is just an impactful and amazing morning for you guys. The pastor's going to have a powerful word. The praise team's going to be on point. We already know all this. But just worship with us and be together with us. Amen. Hey, this is Brother Tim. I'm inviting all the men to our next men's fellowship on March the 21st. We'll be meeting at Brian Moore's house at 6 p.m. We'll be doing a cookout in uh, fellowship. Uh, we'll have more information on the Men of Valor webpage in the near future. Thank you. 
Hey guys, it's Pastor Nikki with Lit Kids. Um, I just wanted to get on here really quick um, to remind you guys that our raffle ticket sale has started. Um, and uh, it's to raise money to send our kids to youth camp again this year. You get one for 10, two for 15, or three for 20. Uh, and the grand prize is a $300 gift card to Academy Sports. Um, the second place is a $200 gift card to Publix. And the third place is a $100 gift card to Walmart. Hey everybody, this is Pastor Ron. Just wanted to get on here and tell you guys, July 9th through the 11th is actually gonna be our core youth retreat. Um, but to reserve your spot, it's gonna be $40 that needs to be paid by March 22nd. So please keep that in mind. Great news, guys. We're joining a church softball league. If you're interested in playing, be sure to stay after service. Hey guys, so glad you're here. Don't forget, next Sunday, March 15th, is our 30 year anniversary for Northwoods Church. We've been in Thomasville 82 years, but we've been here at 640 Hall Road for 30 years. We are excited to invite friends and family out for an awesome time and in service with Pastor Aaron Moncrief and his lovely wife coming to be with us and bringing the word, and then immediately after the service, having a fellowship meal. And then also, I am so excited for today's service. We have with us Reverend William Robertson, and I'm telling you, this is going to be an awesome service. This man of God, I know, has a word for us this morning. So right now, will you get on your feet, give him a good Northwoods welcome, and get ready to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God loves you. Amen. Come on, let's give him a big welcome. Reverend William Robertson's coming to bring the word this morning. What a joy and an honor. Come on, put those hands together and give God some praise in here this morning. Come on, Northwoods, can we give God a great big Shabbat this morning? Can we tell him how wonderful he is? Amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Listen, I am excited, I am excited uh, to be here. And how many of you all know that God is good this morning? Amen. We are so excited to be able to worship him in the beauty of holiness. Now, Northwood, do me a favor. Give yourselves a great big round of applause for making it out to the house of God this morning. Listen, I am godly grateful and exceedingly excited to have this opportunity to be before you, my brothers and sisters, in this labor of love we call ministry. Amen. I am, I am amazed at how God uh, has an auspicious way of connecting his children. Amen. And, and my father in the ministry, amen, Bishop William Lee, has spoken so many wonderful things about your pastor and the phenomenal ministry that you guys are doing here in Thomasville. Could you give your pastor, amen, Pastor Toomey, a great big hand? Come on, let's clap for him. Amen. He's my new big brother in the faith, and I'm, I'm so glad for him, y'all. And you all should be glad because... Your pastor is a representation of you, amen. amen. And his southern hospitality has been phenomenal. He made sure I got in safe, everything was set up. So again, pastor, I appreciate you. I'm humbled by the invitation, amen. And whether you know it or not, I love you anyhow, amen. <laughs> and listen, I've been, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a novice, amen. I'm not a novice. I've been preaching since before I was 13 years old. And, and, and I've learned, Pastor Toomey, and I haven't made it there yet, but, but I've learned that not right behind, but right beside every great man is an even greater woman. Come on, give it up for his lovely wife. <clears throat> Amen. Who works with him. Amen. I often say that she's the flower and the fragrance of the house. She keeps Northwood smelling and looking good, y'all. We, we praise God for you. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed today. I'm blessed. I am. I'm a family oriented individual and, and don't let the bald head fool you. I'm not as old as I look. Amen. I was, I was raised by seasoned saints. Amen. The ministry, but, but my, my mother, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. My mother came y'all mom. Would you wave your hand? Just let everybody see you. Amen. Now I know some of y'all look like mama. Mama where? Yes, that is my mother. We love God and appreciate her. Amen. She drove all the way up from Jacksonville by herself this morning, so we're glad that she came. <laughs> that she came to be with us. I'm excited about God today. Anybody else excited? Am I the only one that feels like we're about to give the devil a black eye this morning? Anybody else going to help me? 
Amen. We're going to give the devil a taste of his own medicine today. Anybody come to have church in Northwood this morning? Amen. Amen. I'm excited. Do me a favor. Go with me in your Bibles. Amen. To the Old Testament text of Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Amen. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a Pentecostal boy. Y'all don't mind if I be myself this morning, do you? Y'all don't mind if I, I grew up in the Pentecostal church. Daniel chapter 3, the Old Testament text of Daniel chapter 3. I don't know, uh, uh, brother, y'all did such a phenomenal job this morning. Can we give God a hand of praise for this wonderful music ministry? Amen. And, and let me tell you what really blessed me to see, amen, how hungry the children are. Oh, amen to worship God that speaks volumes to this ministry that you are making investments and deposits into the next generation and so Northwood I am I, I'm so impressed by amen what I'm saying and I'm just believing for God to bless our time together I I, I don't know I, I can't do what you all did but I, I, I do want to sing a song is that all right is that all right if I sing a song for you this morning uh, uh, could y'all help me it's, it's, it's one of my favorite songs um, it, you gonna try uh, you, you, you know where the key of B-flat is? You know what B-flat is? Yeah. You... There's a simple song that says, How great, this is my favorite song, is our God, sing with me. How great is our God, and all will sing how great. Let's lift it up. How great. We're going to sing it again at that same pace. Keep it right there. Oh, how great, how great. Come on, Northwood, let's make one big choir. Sing, sing with me. me how Yeah, we're gonna keep it right there. Lift up your voice and sing how great, how great is our God. Is our God. All will sing. sing with me how great yeah. is our God. All will oh, we'll sing how great, how great, how great is our God. Is our now come on, let's sing. He's the name. Above all names, oh, it's the name, the name above all names. You are, you are worthy. And guess what? Our hearts are gonna sing. How great! Oh, how great! Oh, it's is our God. Come on, let's lift it up one more time. No music, just the voices. Yours the name of Come on, let's let our voice ring out. And he's worthy of. Worthy of and our hearts will sing. And our heart will sing. How great. One more time. Is our God. Come on. He's the name above all names. One more time with no music. Just let him hear your voice. He's the name. And you were, and our hearts will sing. How great I got. Come on, put those hands together. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how 
great thou art, how great thou art. Now if you believe he's that great, put your hands on it. Come on, put your hands on it. Come on, look at somebody and say, he's a great God, he's a great God, he's a great God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. Our God is great and he's greatly to be praised. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us in Ephesians, says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask, think, or even imagine. Once again, my brothers and sisters, I'm so excited to be here and I believe that God is going to bless our time to get together. Daniel chapter 3 to everybody in their respective places to all of our pastors to just this lovely laity amen known as the Northwood Church we praise God for you and everything you're doing amen one preacher put it this way to everybody in protocol I haven't called amen to Lottie Dottie and everybody we praise God for you amen amen uh, as it is my custom would you all make me feel at home by standing as we reverence the reading of God's word on this morning. Now, Pastor Toomey, I, I, I told you I've been preaching for a while now. One thing, that I've, one thing that I've discovered, one thing that I've learned is that not every, not every long preacher is a strong preacher. Amen. And, and I say that to say this morning that I do not plan on being before you long. Amen. Amen. In the custom in which I grew up, I have at least three times to say that to you before I close. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to be before you long. Daniel chapter 3. And I believe in God to bless our time together. And listen, I, I know, I know based off experience that y'all good preaching is not just when you hear uh, the pulpit communicating to the pew. Amen. But good preaching is when the pew connects to what's coming from the pulpit. Amen. So if the pew can connect with the pulpit, I believe that God will have his way in here on today. So if you hear something you like or you hear something that agrees with your spirit, if you got to run, run. I just might run behind you. Amen. 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 If you got to shout for joy, do whatever God calls you to do. Daniel chapter 3, and I want to highlight for your hearing, and I'm going to ask that you would attach your attention beginning at verse number 19. Old Testament text of Daniel chapter 3. And I want to ask that you would attach your attention beginning at verse 19. Once you have it, why don't you say, I got it. If not, say, wait on me. And we're going to wait. Amen. We're going to wait. Daniel 3, 19. Beloved, in the Bible reads on this wise from the new King James Version. It says, then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. The expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. To cast them into the burning fiery furnace. And then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace and therefore because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego these three men Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. He rose in haste and spoke to his counselor and says, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered, said to the king, True, O king, look, he answered. I see four men loose, let the church shout loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. This is our final part of the pericope and my favorite part. He says, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Um, beloved, with the few fleeting moments that I have, I want to tag this text with the title, Favor in the Fire. 
Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm in church this morning because I've got favor even in the fire. That neighbor don't believe it. Come on, look at another neighbor like I tell him at my church. Say, neighbor, I know I look good, but I made it here today because I've got favor even in my fire. You may be seated. Sovereign Savior, mighty Master, we thank you now for your glory, your grace, your grandeur, your greatness. We thank you that you brought us to this very moment. Now, God, we come realizing that we've reached the pinnacle of this worship experience and encounter. You have preached your proclaimed word. And I pray that, God, some word will be said, some song was sung to pierce and penetrate the heart of these your people that at the end of this presentation God they won't ask what was the name of the preacher they won't ask what was the name of the message but what must I do to know this Lord and this liberator who's Jesus the Christ now God in this moment I decrease so that you can increase within me in this moment God I pray that you will hide me behind the cross now, God, I pray that there's no distractions in the clothes that I wear, but there's deliverance and the clarity in which I'm able to declare. Pray that there's no distractions in the promptness of my speech, but God, there's deliverance in the power in which I'm able to preach. Pray that in this moment you will exempt us and eliminate us from showmanship. Allow your gospel to flow freely from my lips. Hide me behind the cross. Satan may be horrified, your people edified, and more so you glorified. Sign till and deliver this prayer. In the matchless, merciful, marvelous, majestic name of the master. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. One more time, somebody shout like you mean it. I've got favor, I've got favor. even in the fire. In the fire. <laughs> Beloved, immediately when I accepted this assignment, I began to ponder through prominent portions and passages of scripture. And amidst all of my vacillating and searching, lo and behold, my attention was arrested in Daniel chapter 3. When we hop into this scriptural scene, I want to suggest to you, beloved, that there are some behaviors that are present in this plot that help set the context and scene for today's text. If we sojourn throughout Daniel chapter 3, there are three particular behaviors that I want to highlight for us because if you read this chapter in its entirety, first of all, we would see that there is an insecure dictator. Not only is there an insecure dictator, but it's followed by immense dedication. Not only will we discover an insecure dictator followed by immense dedication, but the conflict is ultimately concluded with the intervention of the divine. I want to break it down for you. Here it is because um, there's an insecure dictator because whenever you have to build a statue of yourself to remind people of your status, it deals with self-esteem. And may I remind you, Northwood, that the reason we we're in this particular setting of text is because King Nebuchadnezzar has erected a golden image of whom historians say himself. Pastor Tuma, he puts out a major decree in the land that once you hear the sound of the music, it's mandatory that you bow at the sight of his image. And it is in this point that his insecurities begin to pierce through the fog of his personality. Watch this, because he already has the title, yet he insists on being the talk around town. He already has power and position, yet he yearns for the praises of people. You miss me that way. In other words, watch this. He still needs the affirmation and approbation as authentication and validation to his current situation. Yes. 
And I know some of you are looking at me confused and asking, Preacher, how, what does this mean for me? What, what, where is this applicable in my life? I'm so glad you asked, Northwood, because may I suggest to you that even in the 21st century, we have people who pose and posture themselves as insecure dictators in the Lord's house. They, I, I, I know this doesn't happen at Northwood, but they want you to bow down to what they drive, bow down to where they live, bow down to how good they sing, bow down down to how good they preach does anybody know that even in the lord's house there are some insecure dictators but not only is there an insecure dictator beloved but there's immense dedication because here it is whenever you're willing to die in the name of your deity it deals with dedication once Nebuchadnezzar gets the word that these three young men refuses to acquiesce or give in, watch this, to his mandate, he summons them before him. And there takes place a dialogue, and here it is, I'm paraphrasing, this is the William Robinson version. He summons them before him, and the conversation goes a little something like this. He says, well, young man, I, 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 I just erected this new golden image of myself. And he says, all you got to do is bow down, and everything will be over. He says, I have no problem with you, just bow down to the statue, and you can go on about your way. But these three young men understood a principle that blessed my socks off and hopefully it does the same thing for you. To his shock and chagrin, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego responded, Likewise, king, we don't have a problem with you. But we understand we can't give to a man was due to the master. And there ought to be somebody in here that can testify today that preacher, no matter what I've been through in my life, I've been, I'm mature enough in my spiritual walk with Christ. I'm mature enough to know that if God did it before, he'll do it again. Watch this, that I've come to a place in my spiritual life where I've decided I'm not making no deals with no devil. And is there anybody in here that can say, even if I don't get the house, if I don't get the car, if I don't get the husband or the wife if I don't get what I want I'm mature enough to know that if I stay dedicated long enough to his power to his sovereignty to his grace it's only a matter of time before God intervened would you look at your neighbor and say neighbor tell him don't make no deals with no devils Yes, beloved, here it is. Not only do we see an insecure dictator, not only do we see immense dedication, but I like this because the conflict is ultimately concluded with the intervention of the divine. Yes, it is. Because whenever what you believe delivers you from what tries to break you, it deals with intercession and intervention. And can I tell somebody, I didn't come all the way to Thomasville from Jacksonville, Florida. I didn't come to get in anybody's business as a matter in fact I'm not even trying to know the flavor of your Kool-Aid this morning but I wish I had about six people out there in the pew I'll make number seven in the pulpit that can testify that preacher time after time after time after time after time okay you'll get it in a little while time after time again God has stepped into my desperate dilemma and brought me out of what it was I was going through wish I had a witness in here on a Sunday morning anybody in here your back ever been up against the wall but God stepped in between your back and the wall and made some space anybody in here ever hit rock bottom in your life and discovered that God was the rock at the bottom anybody in here know that no matter what you've gone through no matter what you've been through that if you stay dedicated to who he was it was only a matter of time before who and what you believe leave showed up and saved you from what tried to break you i know this is a sunday morning i know y'all got a speaker coming next sunday but could somebody get happy with me right here and give god praise because there was a time in your life where the devil tried to destroy you he tried to throw you into a furnace but in the midst of all he tried to do god stepped in right on time and he interceded on your behalf we see, we see, beloved, an insecure dictator. We see an immense dedication, but we see the intervention of the divine. But Pastor Toomey, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning every day to fall in love more and more with Daniel chapter 3 because watch this. Uh, as we continue to peruse the perimeter of Daniel chapter 3, don't miss this, beloved. There is still a critical component 
of this conflict that cannot be overlooked. Somebody shout the fire. Yes, beloved, because when we look at this text from the perspective of the fire, we'll see just how much favor these three young men had on their life. Can I prove it to you? Listen, this fire was intended to kill, to consume, to destroy, to make mockery of, and even to put to death. But friends, as we continue to read this text, none of those things happen. Oh God, I'm getting happy all by myself. Watch this. As a matter of fact, as we continue to read the text, we'll come to discover, watch this, that the fire does the antithesis of everything it's anticipated to do. Okay, you missed it. In other words, the fire could not carry out what it was created to do. Okay, you missed it again. In other words, the fire operated in opposition to its original origin. Okay, in other words, it just didn't work. But you look at your neighbor and say, it just didn't work. And beloved, this ought to make somebody shout and have everybody tear the roof off this church. Because watch this. This is the thesis statement of my sermon. This text is tailored to teach us, beloved, watch this, that the favor of God on your life is not determined or it is not predicated. Watch this. Not by what you possess, but by how God preserves you. And somebody in here ought to give God praise because your testimony this morning is preacher. I, 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 I know that I've got God's favor on my life, not based upon the car I drive, the house I live in. I know that God's favor on my life is not predicated or determined by cash, clothes, cars, and a good career. It's not determined by what I possess, but, God, but how God has the ability to preserve me. And does anybody in here know that when you should have been dead and when you found yourself in a sticky situation that your wallet couldn't get you out of but your worship could it wasn't because watch this of your possession but it was about how God preserved you and I wonder if I have somebody in Northwood that can say preacher I know he's in the preserving business because he preserved my mind when I was depressed he, he preserved my home when I had no money he, he preserved my family when the enemy Drop the tear us apart. Anybody in him know that you got God's favor not based upon what you have, but based upon the fact I've got God's favor not based upon what I have, but who has me? Preacher, how do you know it? I like it because we used to sing in my old Pentecostal church that he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got my mama, my daddy, my anybody know that he's got me in his hands. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm in his hands. I'm in his hands. God's power of favor, watch this, is not determined, beloved, based upon what you possess, but by how God has allowed you to be preserved. And somebody here, I'll just lift your hands and give God a wave off from, because some of us in here should have been in jail. Some of us in here should have been dead. Some of us should have here should have been strung out. Some of us in here should have been on our 20th child, but God's preservation power. Beloved, I, I want to magnify three signs or symptoms from Daniel chapter 3 that is a literal insinuation of the fact that you've got God's favor on your life. Can I do that? Can I, can, can I give you these three signs that you've got God's favor on your life? And I'm, I'm, I'm on the way back to Jacksonville. Here it is. There are three signs that the text is tailored to teach us. Here it is, the first one. You know you have God's unparalleled, unprecedented, unmerited grace and favor on your life. Don't miss it. Watch this. When the fire that was intended for you, watch this. Don't miss it. Point number one, when it devours your enemies. I, Pastor Josh, I tried to find a better way to, to label it, but I, I, I could find no other way. Watch this. You know that you have God's favor when what was intended to kill you could not harm you. The Bible says, beloved, that, 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 that Nebuchadnezzar tells his strongest men in the army to bind up these three young men, hand and foot. Don't miss this first part of this point that's going to shout you. Watch this. He says, he says bound them up and throw them into the fire. Listen, li li listen to what he says in verse 21. He says, then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace which means sometimes beloved 
Watch this. Nebuchadnezzar used what was on them against them. He, he, my people don't know when to shout when the text. Here it is. In other words, here it is. Uh, let me lay this revelation in your lap. Sometimes, watch this, the fires of your life, you know you're going through a fire. Watch this. Sometimes when what was intended to work for you is working against you. Nebuchadnezzar used what was on them against them. And he says, he says, tie them up and throw them into the fire. What's amazing is, is that when they throw these three young men into the fire, before it even tells us what happens to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in later verses, it says that their enemies got burned. When I, when, 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 when I think of this, I think of one of the, the greatest theologians or, 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 or preachers of, of, in my estimation, Bishop McKissick, when he says out of Jacksonville, watch this. He says, oftentimes God will allow your enemy to execute their plan without seeing their desired outcome. All right. here, I got to say that he says, oftentimes God will allow your enemies to execute their plan without seeing their desired outcome. One more time for the faint at heart. He says, God will allow your enemy to execute their plan without seeing their desired outcome. All right, I'm a preacher. Here it is. So I got to put a remix on everything. In other words, here it is. God will allow the enemy to set up shop in different areas of your life. He'll set up shop in places like your mind, your ministry, your marriage, your finances, your future, and your faith. But God says, well, I want you to go to Northwood and I want you to give them this prophetic declaration. And he says, he says, don't be discouraged because every Everybody's not going to catch it. He says it's only for about five people that needs this revelation. He says tell them it doesn't matter how much the enemy set up shop if his products never sell. And there ought to be somebody in here today that can say I'm not buying the fact that I got to suffer because other people don't want to see me succeed. I, I'm not buying the fact that people want to see me die broke, busted, and disgusted. But is there anybody in here know that if you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, every weapon that the enemy tried to form against you every ditch that the devil dug he's going to fall into every lie that he told it's going to happen today is there anybody in him that can say preach I've been walking with God long enough to know that if I just stand still and hold my peace it's only a matter of time before God fight my battles is there anybody in here you found out that you ain't got to cuss people out no more you ain't got to bust nobody in the face you ain't got to go to nobody's house because if you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, it's only a matter of time before he vindicates you. The Bible declares that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and surely I shall repay. Beloved, you know you have God's favor on your life. Watch this. When the fires of your life, watch this, it devours your enemies. And there's somebody in here, you've been dismayed, you've been crying, you've been heartbroken because the fire in this text is a metaphor in our own lives for everything that's been sending us through this metaphorical hell. The fire is a metaphor for everything that seems like it's been consuming our joy and our peace and for people who have literally tried to create a pit for you but God says don't worry about those people and those things because the fire ain't going to consume you but the fire is going to consume them yeah. Northwood after 30 years of ministry in this location I just want you to know that no matter what people have tried to do to you no matter what people have tried to say about you no matter what accusations have, have come up against you, God says, don't worry about the fire because it's designed for your enemies. Can I give you the second symptom that you've got God's favor? Not only when the fire devours your enemies, but watch this. I love this point. Here it is. The fire is designed for your emancipation. In, 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 in 1863, 64, one of them, President Abe Lincoln signed what we know as the Emancipation Proclamation setting those individuals who were slaves free beloved watch this this whole idea of emancipation deals with the process of being set free I'm back in the Bible watch this the Bible says I love this beloved that once they throw them into the fire they were restricted in terms of their mobility watch this because they were bound by hand and foot 
God, I'm getting happy. Y'all pray for me up here. It says that they were bound. They were restricted in terms of their mobility because Nebuchadnezzar used what was on them against them. But here it is, as Nebuchadnezzar gets up and he looks into the furnace, he's seeing something that literally baffles him. He says, he says, the first conclusion he comes to, he says, hold up, they loose. In other words, watch this, sometimes, beloved, the fires of your life is not designed to consume you. Sometimes the fire is designed to set you free from what's been holding you down. All right, here it is. See, only the mature Christians can shout on this particular point because everybody don't like to go through the fire. But God says, well, I need you to tell them that sometimes the fire ain't always a bad thing. He said, sometimes the fire is a decoy because I'm allowing your enemies to think that you're about to be consumed when really I'm about to set you free. And there's somebody here in Norfolk, you've been going through a fire since 2020 has started. And God says, we'll tell them I'm sending them through a fire so it can purify and set them free from some things that you've been going through. Because there's somebody, you already got the testimony that yes, since I've been through the fire, I got a better attitude. I, I got a better spiritual relationship with God. Anybody in here know that the fire ain't always designed to kill you, but sometimes God wants to use a fire to allow some things that were in you to come out of you and is there anybody in Northwood that can get happy with me right here and just lift up your hands and say God I thank you for the fire because it wasn't until I went through the fire that some ch things changed in my life is there anybody in here radical enough to just throw up your hands and say burn baby burn everything that's not like God has got to burn envy's got to burn jealousy got to burn malice got to burn would you look at your neighbor and encourage them and say neighbor come on talk to your neighbor like we're in Super Bowl Sunday say neighbor tell them the fire is not designed to kill you tell them but God's about to set you free and I wish I had somebody that will give God praise because you feel yourself getting free you feel yourself getting free from depression you feel yourself getting free from brokenness you feel yourself getting free from malice can anybody give God praise because you're going through the fire and the fire is about to set you free look at somebody say I'm free tell them I'm free Bible says that it's designed for your emancipation I like this beloved he says he says hold up they're loose and can I tell you beloved don't be dismayed and the reason God has me on assignment at Northwood this morning is because we've been taught here it is in this 21st century church here it is that if you name it and claim it you can have it and grab it and if you walk around it seven times and if you speak in enough tongues and if you roll on the floor and all of these different things and things are going to change no no God says sometimes I have meticulously orchestrated for a fire to be started and patched in your life so that I can send you through a fire so that you can be purified for some things that are holding you down Pastor Toomey, I'm not rich. One day I can, hopefully I can be rich like you, Pastor Toomey. <laughs> but I, my mother here, she knows when I was a kid I had this fetish, beloved, I, I love watches. And she'd always try to tell me, you need to tithe, you need to tithe, but I just couldn't stop buying watches. I love jewelry. And every time I get a little check, I go and try to buy me some jewelry. And one day I saw this nice gold watch I couldn't afford, but I was inquisitive as to how they made gold. How, 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 how did you guys even do it? The man told me the process in which it takes to make gold, whether it's a gold ring, it's a gold necklace, gold watch. Told me the process in which it took. He says, son, he says it's, it's melted down. He says, then it's the gold stuck into the oven. He says, once you stick it into the oven, he says, all of the bacteria rises to the top. He says, you take out the gold 
and you scrape the bacteria off of it. And I said, oh, so after you scrape the bacteria off of it, you, you start the building process. He said, no, 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 no. He said, you stick it back into the oven. He said, it melts down again and more bacteria rises to the top. He says, you take it out, you scrape the rest of the bacteria off of it. I said, oh, okay, now, so now you make the wash. Now you put the diamonds in there and you, you make it like this, right? He said, no, no, no. He says, calm down, son, no. He says, Stick it back into the oven. He says, you allow it to burn and burn and burn. And he says, what you'll discover is that even more bacteria will rise to the top. He says, then you scrape the bacteria off of it. I said, well, well how much bacteria is in this stuff? How much is this stuff really worth? He says, then you pull it out. I says, oh, then you make it. He says, no, no, no. He says, then you got to let it sit for a little while so that it can take on its form that it's going to take on. And, and at this young age, I'm thinking that if this watch got to go through the fire, because sometimes it's hidden bacteria in, in, in the raw gold. And sometimes, beloved, before we can come forth as pure gold, we've got to sit in the fire so that the bacteria can rise to the top. And, and, I, and I, I, I know some of you are asking God how long do I have to stay in the fire God says no 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 it's still some bacteria in there so I got to put you back in the fire and God takes you back out and he, he scrapes off some of that bacteria and then you're saying God well how long is it before I can be in ministry how long is it before I can preach how long is it before I can sing or before I can serve God says no before I can allow you to take your original shape you've got to sit for a little while <laughs> and is there anybody in here that know that says I know what it feels like to go through the refiner's fire <laughs> because once I've been in the oven I, I, I know what it feels like to be in the oven I, I know what it feels like to be great but in the midst of being burnt in the mix of being scraped in the mix of having to wait God was showing me that it was all being orchestrated for a greater good in my life because he was emancipating me from some things that were detrimental to my life fire Devours your enemies. It's designed for your emancipation. It's designed to set you free. I'm done beloved here it is you know you have God's favor on your life even in the fire, when it devours your enemies, it's designed for your emancipation. But I love this. Watch this. When the divine is engaged. It's in the B clause of verse 25. And I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm going to try not to holler. But here it is. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out of here. Here it is. Nebuchadnezzar comes to an astonishing conclusion, beloved. And I have to pump the brakes here because the text get a little intricate and we can miss a valuable piece if we're not careful. He says, they're loose. They're walking around. And he says, there's a fourth figure in the fire. <laughs> now, watch this. As many times, and I know that y'all don't want to admit this, because y'all are saved, sanctified, and sedated. But watch this. I can kind of see where Nebuchadnezzar is coming from. Because as many times as he's thrown people into this fire, he's always seen the numbers decreased. He's never seen them multiply. But he looks into this fire and says, hold up. Not only are they loose, but there's a fourth figure in the fire. Pastor Tuman, that's not even the shout of the text. The shout of the text is who he concludes the fourth figure to be. He says, and the form of the fourth is like unto the Son of God. Okay, here it is. This is my problem, beloved, because he comes to the conclusion that the fourth figure is the Son of God. Northwood, the only theological problem that I have here is that the Son of God throughout the entirety of Scripture is understood or revealed to be Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The only problem or predicament we have is that we're in the Old Testament. Here it is. Jesus doesn't come on the scene in his incarnate flesh until the New Testament. He, so Nebuchadnezzar looks into the fire and he comes to the conclusion that the fourth figure in the fire is somebody who's not even here yet. 
<laughs> and sometimes, watch this, you ought to give God praise, watch this, because while you're going through the fire, Jesus has already been in there all along. <laughs> Tell your story, and I'm out of your way. Tell your story, I'm out of the way. Watch this. The story about an elderly man. This elderly man would, would literally, he wanted to stay in shape, Pastor Toomey, so he took this walk. He would take this walk every now and then around 6 p.m., and, and his walk included going through this one, this one alley. And around a certain time, it got dark in this particular alley. He walked through the alley one day, and, and he lit his candles before he went home. As he was lighting his candles, he, he, he took some matches with him. He was going through the dark alley, and he noticed that there was a young man in the same dark alley with him. And the young man, he couldn't really paint out his features because he had on a hoodie. The young man walked up to this elderly man as he was doing his normal routine walk, and he says, he says, hey, he said, do you have a, a light where I can light my cigarette? The elderly man told the young man, he says, no, son. He said, I, I don't really smoke. He said, oh, but, but, but I, I, I do have some matches on me from when I lit, lit my candles when I left home. And, and he struck the match for the young man and lit it up, put it up to the young man's cigarette, and he continued on his journey on his walk, and when the elderly man got back home, he turned on the television only to discover that in the same alley, the same time, the same young man that had asked him for a light had murdered somebody else. And he was so confused as to why this young man wouldn't have taken advantage of him. After all, he was an elderly, feeble man. And he grabbed his coat and his hat. He walked down to the prison. He's he says, Ward, I need to talk to that young man you've just taken into custody. The ward took him back to speak to the young man. He says, young man, I've got to ask you a question. He says, I'm an elderly man. I'm a, I'm a feeble man. He says, you could have taken advantage of me in that dark alley. He says, why didn't you do it? He says, why, why didn't you take me? And the young man responded. He says, old man, he said, I've been following you for quite some time now. He says, I know you've done well for yourself. He said, I had every intention to take you out. He says, but the reason I didn't do it is because when you lit the match, there was something behind you. He said, he had eyes like balls of fire. He had hair like sheep wool. And the elderly man, he stood up. He said, son, say no more. And the young man said, I'm not feeling telling you who it was. He said, say no more. He said, that was my savior. And can I tell you, Northwood? That sometimes even though you're going through the fire, God is already in your fire. And somebody here ought to give God praise because when you were going through the fires of your life, Jesus was already in the fire. He was already fighting on your behalf. He was already making a way. And can I tell you that God is still making a way for you. You can't throw in the towel. You can't quit. You can't give up. You can't give in. Because while you're going through it, Jesus is already in yes, it. Amen. There's somebody in here today. There's somebody in here today. You're, you're going through a I, I, I don't know who you are. I don't know what your life situation is. I don't know what your circumstance is. But you're going through a fire in your life and, and, and you've been discouraged because it seems like this fire is consuming everything. And the devil is trying to play a trick on your mind to let you think that this fire can't be quenched, that, 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 that it can't be put out when in all actuality it can be quenched, but it won't be because God is going to use what, what, what you think is against you for you. And I want to pray for somebody in here today. I'm going to make two appeals. I want to pray for somebody in here today. That may be somebody in here you already say, but you're saying, preacher, I'm tired of hearing this same old narrative that this is going to be my year, that this next year is my year, that this is it, this is it. But I'm going to tell you right now, since 2020 has started, somebody in this room has been going through some fires. And as I said, the fire is a metaphor for everything in your life that's making you uncomfortable. I mean, no heat, too much heat makes things uncomfortable. And I want to pray for you. There may be somebody here today. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that whatever fire you're going through, God shows you that it's not for your detriment, but it's really for your deliverance. Somebody here, you've been going through a fire in your finances. 
your marriage, your home, and your mind. If that's you, I want you to meet me at this altar. Don't be ashamed of who's watching. I want you to meet me down here at this altar. Don't be ashamed of who doesn't come or who does come. But the truth of the matter is, you need somebody to stand with you and agree with you. This fire in your life, it's not going to take you out, but it's going to take you to another level. Because that's what ultimately happens in the text, beloved. Watch this. When Nebuchadnezzar notices that there's four figures in the fire, he calls forth Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And when he calls them forth, he says, not only did you die, but you had so much faith. He says, your God showed up for you. And he says, from this day forth, the God that you serve is the God that we're going to serve. Here it is. I want to pray for somebody's faith. That no matter what fire that you've been going through, it's not designed to take you out. It's going to set you free. I want every eye closed, every head bowed at this altar. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Every eye closed, every head bowed. And in your own way, I want you to begin to worship God. Right where you are, worship Him. I teach this all over the country. Wherever God allows me to minister, I teach this. We have direct access to Jesus. We refer to it as the priesthood of all believers. And before somebody comes and, and lay hands on you or pray with you, your worship, your petition, the sincerity of your cry, reaches him and I'm going to pray with you but I want you to just begin to worship right now begin to connect with him right where you are as I come and touch and agree God over every household over every person that's represented at this altar as a matter of fact God that may be somebody who didn't even come up to this altar, but I pray for them right now. God, I pray for all of your people out there in these, in this sanctuary. Touch them. Somebody's getting ready to give up, God. I feel it. Somebody's getting ready to quit. But I bind the spirit of give up, and I bind the spirit of give in. I bind the spirit of impatience. Because your hand yeah, is going to be shown in our life. God, I touch each individual at this altar. And I speak strength. Ha. I speak grace. I speak endurance right now over every home. That no matter what fires may be trying to infiltrate their life. No matter what fires may be trying to consume them God it's not meant for their detriment but you're getting ready to deliver something deliver them from the spirit of suicide deliver them from the spirit of lack Just deliver them from the spirit of not enough the spirit of low self esteem we come against it in the name of Jesus touch right now God one by one and name by name Every brother, every sister that's represented at this altar. Everybody that's connected to them, God. I pray the unparalleled, unprecedented, unmerited grace and favor of God on their life. One by one and name by name. Ha, shot. God, you're able to do it, God. You're able to do it, God. You're able to do it, God. Whatever they're standing in the need of, God. There's somebody, God, who's ready to quit. God, there's somebody who can't take it. There's somebody in an uncomfortable position. There's somebody, God, who, who's never felt this before, who just feels like the weight is too much, that the burden is too heavy. But I want to declare that favor has already been granted to them. Peace has already been extended. Peace has already been extended. 
Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, God, be our banner, be our peace, be our provider. In the midst of so much confusion, in the midst of so much chaos, I pray, God, over every house, over every home, every, every man, every boy, every girl, touch God, move in the hearts.
It's not just enough to know the Lord of your great grandmother and your great grandfather and your grandmother. You have to get your own interaction with Him. Yes. Bob declares in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. And then listen to what he says in Romans. Listen to what he says the prerequisites to salvation are. It's simple. If you believe in your heart, Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. You shall be saved. Can I tell you that's all it is? One of my fears, Pastor Josh, is that we've made salvation so intricate. And we want to offer this opportunity of salvation to some man, some woman, some boy, or some girl. You're never too old, you're never too young, you're never too in between, whatever that means. Somebody here, if you have not confessed aloud with your mouth, and with that same tenacity and fervor of confession, if you have not believed in your heart, that Jesus is Lord and liberator of all, we want to offer this and extend this opportunity to salvation to you. And I'm not sure how you guys do it, but if you want to, you can just meet me right down here at this altar. The praise him and I, we're going to sing this chorus one more time. And we're going to let God move on somebody's heart. And I need everybody in here to believe that whoever in here who's not saved, that God is going to move on their heart. Amen. Amen. Come on, praise him. Let's sing it one more time. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. It may look good. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you.
knee of Reverend William Robinson, a gigantic hand of appreciation yes, amen. for coming and obeying the Lord this morning, for preaching an all-time word. Amen. I'm telling you, I know I'm not the only one here that needed to know it, but I'm so thankful for a fresh fire. Yes, Lord. Sometimes the Lord makes the enemy the deliverer boy for my fresh fire. But I'm so thankful that when it's all said and done, there will be beauty that arises from the ashes. Thank you so much, Reverend, for your obedience, the way you honor God, the way you allowed the Holy Spirit to use you and to speak to our hearts. We appreciate you so much, so much for that. Thank you, Mama, for making the drive all the way up here. Yes, amen. Let's give her a big hand. Amen. I know as a mama, you got to be proud right now. And I'm so thankful just for God making this kingdom connection. Um, I'm friends with Reverend William Robinson on Facebook, so I keep up with him a lot. And uh, Bishop Lee spoke very highly of, of you, and, and um, I'm so thankful. Uh, for that connection and to have this connection now god I tell you god has a way of intertwining the body amen that we may be on opposite ends of the globe but with one prayer one spirit god brings the unity of the body of believers in one just one realm hallelujah aren't you glad that that borders and 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 rivers and streams and and bodies of water don't separate the body of Christ. I am so thankful and I am so honored to be able to stand up here today and say thank you to the man of God for obeying the Holy Spirit. Yes, Amen. It was our honor to ha to be able to have you. Um, as we get ready to close, I want to remind everyone: please, 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 do not forget next Sunday morning. 30 year anniversary for Northwoods Church and I'm telling you he preached it this morning some of you we still got a handful of those people that were here the day the ground broke out here and in 2020 we're standing today in spite of all odds that said you're supposed to fail amen three years ago when God let us my Ash and I come down here before we made the the move I remember people calling my phone saying, hey, Brother Josh, you really need to pray. I'm telling you, there's a lot of history there that you might not want to go get into. We've had some good men of God go through there. and I just don't want to see your ministry die. But I am so thankful. I am so thankful that I did not need the idol of a man I didn't need, when the music started playing, I didn't need to bow down to the idol of a man. But I said, Lord, you said go, I'm going to go. And wherever the sole of my foot may tread, that have you given unto your people, God. I'm so thankful. I told somebody yesterday, or the day before yesterday, I said, you know, there's something. I've been, I've been in ministry a while, and I've been all over the state of Georgia. I've ministered all over the place as an evangelist. But when I started pastoring, I've been all over from Columbus to Vidalia to Savannah to Albany, now Thomasville. I said, this is the first place that I feel at home. I said, and, and, and I'm so thankful for the fire that purified along the way. And I'm so thankful for that season that when I came out of the fire, God said, I want you to sit a little while. I want you to sit. I know you got it in your bones, Jeremiah, but I want you to sit a little while. I know, you, I know you're itching to get on the stage, but I want you to sit a little while. I know you're itching to get up there and put what I've been giving you, but I'm telling you, you just keep preparing, and I'm going to open the door. And I'm telling you, when the, when the door swung open, I couldn't contain all that God was pouring. And I'm so thankful that I got a friends and family and believers in Northwoods Church. Listen, all my blood family is back two or three hours away. But I'm telling you, I'm so thankful for my God family. Amen. Because whether you believe it or not, you blood now. We all under the same blood of Jesus. So I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. But I'm, just, I'm also thankful for, to be able to celebrate next week the hard work and the and those that stood the, the test of time and stood the fiery furnace 
And you're part of the reason that we're still here today. And I'm so honored to be able to honor you guys next week and the, and the history of this church. So um, if you're thankful for the heritage of Northwoods Church, will you give God a big hand clap of praise? I know that we watched the video earlier, but I know that when uh, some announcements are made, the, the comedy sometimes overrides what's being said. And I want to make sure you understood that immediately after the service this morning that the... If you are interested in playing church league softball, um, you must be 16 years of age. Um, we're not trying to bend rules. We're not trying to, uh, we, we, this is a church league softball, um, and we're going to be church about it. You know, we, we want to do the right thing, and whether another team has a seven-year-old out there, that's not our goal. We, we're here um, to follow the rules that were set in place by the Y. But we've been, we're going to have a softball team this year, and I'm excited about it. So if you will, immediately after the service, if you'll meet right over here in this section, Brother Chris is going to meet with you. He's uh, heading it up for us this year. Um, and maybe you don't want to play, but you want to participate, and you want to be a part of the team, and you want to just kind of kind of be in the loop of what's going on, stay for the meeting. Anybody's welcome. And listen, men and women can't play. It's a men's league softball, which means the only difference is, is women can't play, but we don't play by co-ed rules. We don't have the big women's softball. We, yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Well, I hope you can hit a home run. <laughs> but anyhow, we, we want you to play, but women, you are invited to play. Um, like I said, it, the only thing is, is it's men's rules. So, um, you know, you, as long as you play on that same standard, last time we had women play and done an awesome job. So we are excited about that. Don't forget, Sister Debbie met with you, a lot of you ladies uh, and men. Uh, don't forget next Sunday um, the meat has become be completely taken care of but uh, if you signed up for a side make sure you please have it here that morning so we can have it over there getting it ready uh, during the service and being prepared to go over and, fresh, and have a fresh start event so immediately after the service next week we're going to go over for fellowship we're going to eat we're going to have a good time and then we're going to have our fresh start event you say what's a fresh start event something that we've been doing for almost two and a half years here um, every other month we'll have a fresh start event uh, we play games. We've got cornhole. We've got a fishing pond out here. You can fish. We got volleyball. We got basketball. Uh, we got frisbees. We, whatever you want to do, we got it. Amen. So come on out and uh, enjoy uh, a time in the a fellowship and in the Lord. And if you know somebody that used to attend this church, don't go take them out of another church because uh, we won't. I know what it's like to be a pastor and your people go missing. But I want to say, if you know someone that used to be a part of this church and they're not, they're not grounded anywhere. Send them a special invitation. Say, look, we, if you don't got to, we ain't trying to adopt you unless you want to be adopted. But we just want to invite you to a time in the Lord because you are a part of where we're at. And just let them know how much we would appreciate them coming and being a part of that. Um, with that being said, I think that is uh, all the big stuff. Don't forget about the youth trip, uh, youth retreat trip coming up. Kids selling raffle tickets for their event, for youth camp. Amen. Will you stand all over the house this morning? And let's get ready. One more time, let's give the man of God a big hand of appreciation for coming and delivering a powerful word. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and send you on your way. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that in a world so big, a universe so big, God, that right here in Thomasville, Georgia, you will reach down and put your fingerprint God, anything that you touch is pure and is holy. God, I'm just reminded of one of the, my favorite scriptures of all time. In Isaiah 43, God, you said, when I enter the waters, the rivers will not overflow me. And when I enter the fire, I will not be burned. And neither shall the flame even kindle upon me. God, I know that whatever fiery furnace awaits our ministry, awaits our family, awaits our, our church, awaits our community. God, it doesn't hold the power over you. And we thank you for your hand of protection. We thank you, God, that it was with fire that the church was born. In Acts chapter 2, God, we thank you, Lord, that fire 
though it looks hard, it looks hot, it looks impossible, can sometimes be the molding of something greater than we've ever imagined. So we thank you for those fiery times, God. But we thank you for men of faith like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that even though their Hebraic names were changed, God, you gave them the faith uh, to, to stand in the midst of, of, a, of a multitude that opposed their decision, God, but yet they stood the test. They stood in the trial. And even when they said, if you kill me, I know my God can save me. But even if it don't, I'm not going to bow to the altar. God, you tested their statement of faith. And God, when they went into that furnace, as we heard this morning, God, we seen the release of something they had always believed. God, it's one thing to believe it. But it's another thing when we see our belief come to fruition. God, I thank you this morning that the man of God was anointed. God is anointed and will continue to walk in the the anointing God wherever he goes we pray right now a blessing over him his family his mother as they travel today God you give them traveling mercies God you send that hedge of protection before them God I pray that you let the raindrops of heaven water the grounds that he's plowed and God I'm believing I'm believing God that his ministry is going to continue to grow because, God, there is so much, so much that you're speaking into him, Lord, that this world needs to hear. God, that, that you would use this man of God to tear down the walls of division. God, that you would use this man to break the fear away from, from, from pol 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 politics and policies, God. That, that, that fear will not attack the church, but, but that there will be a faith that arises to override the fear. Because, God, our, our, our salvation doesn't rest in a president. Our salvation doesn't rest in a political party. Our, pre, our, 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 our salvation doesn't even rest in our ability. Our salvation is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the blood of Jesus that sets the captive free. It is the blood of the Lamb that causes the death of angel to pass us by. It is the blood of Jesus Christ Though it flows crimson red, it makes us white as snow. God, right now, as we get ready to leave this building, let us not depart your presence. Go with us, for we are not leaving church. We're leaving as the church. God, when we step out of these doors this morning, equip us, for we know that we are stepping onto battlegrounds. But as the song said earlier, this is how I will fight my battles. For the battle is not even mine, says the Lord. But it belongs to the Lord. So God, I just thank you for a mighty word this morning. I thank you for the vision. I thank you for the ministry. I thank you for the believers and the committed, faithful men of God and women of God that are surrounding us. Because we know, God, that it is by them, Lord God, that this gospel will be carried. So I'm asking you in Jesus' name, bless us as we leave this place today. Bring us back at the appointed times, ready, on fire, and hungry to worship. In Christ's most holy name we pray. And everybody says, amen. amen. If you have a moment on your way out, come let the man of God and his family know how much we've enjoyed them today. And amen, how much he has blessed us. And if you plan on playing softball, make your way over this way and meet and greet with us. And we'll be happy to fill you in. God bless you.